Okay, welcome everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started. I now call to order this special meeting of the Anchorage Assembly. It is Monday, September 26, 2022. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Yes, Madam Chair. Ms. Allard. Here. Mr. Salt. Here. Mr. Perez Verdia. Here. Mr. Rivera. Okay. Mr. Cross. Here. Ms. LaFrance. Here. Mr. Constant. Here. Ms. Zolotel is excused. Or is she recused? Ms. Zolotel is excused because she's recused. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. You're a poet and you don't know it. Um, Mr. Dunbar. Here. Ms. Quinn Davidson is excused. Mr. Boland? Here. Mr. Peterson? Present. You have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And Mr. Rivera will be joining us momentarily. Mr. Thompson, who is the board president of the Alaska Hockey Association and also with Challenge Alaska, will be leading the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Volin, would you read the land acknowledgment, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Happy to. A land acknowledgment is a formal statement recognizing the indigenous people of a place. It is a public gesture of appreciation for the past and present indigenous stewardship of the lands that we now occupy. It is an actionable statement that marks our collective movement towards decolonization and equity. The Anchorage Assembly would like to acknowledge that we gather today on the traditional lands of the Denina Athabascans. For thousands of years, the Denina have, have been and continue to be the stewards of this land. It is with gratefulness and respect that we recognize the contributions, innovations, and contemporary perspectives of the Upper Cook Inlet Denina. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us here tonight for this special meeting. We appreciate you making time to participate in this process, whether here in person or joining us online. We have one item of business on the agenda, item 4A, emergency shelter items for action and appropriation. Before we take up any items, I will go to Mr. Rivera, who I understand should be joining us any second here. If folks will just stand by for a minute here. Madam, Madam Clerk, would you please note that we have been joined by Mr. Rivera? Mr. Rivera? Okay, if we can go ahead and put up the presentation, please. For some of you, this is gonna be a little bit of a repeat. There's some new stuff in this presentation, so. Um, once we get it up, I will begin.
Thank you. Thank you to everyone who attended the September 21st Housing and Homelessness Committee meeting, the meeting yesterday, and now today's meeting. And uh, thank you to the chair for giving me the time to give this presentation one final time, I hope. Next slide, please. We are going to start today's meeting with a short presentation so everyone can get on the same page and understand the decisions we need to make today. I think it's important to have a basic understanding of the situation we are in and the timeline that led us to this meeting today. I make no political commentary with this timeline, just the facts. Although we could begin this timeline much earlier than June of 2022, as has been noted, and include other key points beyond what I've added, this condensed timeline sufficiently tells the story and keeps this meeting in a solutions-oriented and collaborative space. Next slide, please. So this version of the story begins on June 2nd, when the mayor announced the closure of the Sullivan Arena as a COVID-19 mass care site. On June 24th, the assembly received an email notification from the municipal manager regarding Centennial Park Campground, which was the first official communication regarding the change in status at Centennial. On July 12th, three assembly members, Mr. Perez Verdia, Mr. Voland, and myself, put forward a five-pronged plan to address what we dubbed as the humanitarian crisis on our streets. The assembly approved four of the components of this plan on July 26th. Most relevant, the assembly approved forward funding for both family and single adult emergency sheltering. One of the provisions of what the assembly approved on July 26th required the administration to present their emergency shelter plan to the Housing and Homelessness Committee on August 17th. Next slide, please. When the administration did not meet this requirement, that same day, the assembly approved a resolution creating the Emergency Shelter Task Force and set a deadline of, of, excuse me, of September 21 for the task force to come up with preliminary recommendations for review at the Housing and Homelessness Committee. The task force would be convened by the Anchorage Coalition to End Homelessness, and members of the administration were required to be invited to the meetings a requirement which was met at the first meeting of the task force on August 22nd and all future meeting, meetings of the task force. On August 31st, the administration released its emergency shelter plan. The assembly reviewed the administration's plan on September 7, a day after the task force began its outreach on the initial properties under consideration in their plan, which at the time were the Alex Hotel, Recreation, Arctic Recreation Center, former Barrett Inn, former Benson DMV, the old Sherwin-Williams, and America's Best Value Inn. This list changed on a weekly, if not daily, basis. Next slide, please. On September 9, I sent a letter to the task force requesting they consider the Golden Lion in lieu of using the Spinard and Fairview Rec Centers. On September 14, the task force achieved consensus on Tier 1 recommendations, which are properties that can be turned on by October 1. The task force released a written report on their preliminary recommendations to the Assembly and Administration on September 16. That same day, the task force began its outreach efforts focused on two of the recommendations in the report, the former Golden Lion and the Dempsey. On September 21, the Assembly's Housing and Homelessness Committee reviewed the task force preliminary recommendations and then went through a process to determine which facilities that could be turned on by October 1 would be part of the emergency shelter plan we have before us today. And not noted, yesterday we did hold a special committee meeting in these chambers where we heard feedback from members of the public on the emergency shelter plan. Next slide, please. There are two prime reasons why October 1 is such a pivotal deadline for phase one of this work. One, it is getting colder every night, and legally the municipality must provide emergency shelter. And two, Centennial Park Campground will be closing on September 30th as determined by the administration. So while we could spend all of our time today talking about the Navigation Center, the portable buildings, Northway Mall, or any of the other ideas we've heard, None of these possibilities are viable to meet the impending deadline of October 1. The only viable options are MOA-owned facilities and expansion of current existing facilities. Next slide, please. We'll start with a review of the administration's plan, which had four options. Option A was the portable self-contained buildings. We learned on September 7 that, these, that the buildings would not be online until November at the earliest. 
that changed just last Friday at a work session on a Title 23 ordinance related to the portables, with this option not being viable until the winter of 2023-2024. Winter of option B are the microgrants with one current applicant. We learned on September 21 that this option would likely not be ready by October 1. Option C is the Navigation Center, which on September 7, we learned would not be available for partial occupancy until November. Option D, the Spinard and Fairview Rec Centers, were, were rescinded by the mayor on September 13. Next slide, please. That takes us to the Emergency Shelter Task Force. So this slide shows the menu of options presented to the assembly of Tier 1 recommendations. As a reminder, Tier 1 options are those that can be turned on by October 1. These options included the Golden Lion, Dempsey or Bokeh Ice Arenas, Sullivan Arena, Denina or Egan Centers, Spinard and Fairview Recreation Centers, and expanding existing program capacity. Next slide, please. The task force narrowed that list down to their official recommendations, which could meet the need of sheltering 350 unsheltered individuals, which included the Golden Lion, Dempsey Ice Arena, and expanding, and expanding capacity at Brother Francis Shelter, Covenant House, and the new Beans Cafe location in Midtown. Next slide, please. Today, the Assembly will be considering the plan, the Housing and, Homeless, Home, the Housing and Homelessness Committee. Hold, please. Apologies, I think I have a different version of my notes, so give me two seconds. One of the things that we didn't get a chance to discuss last week was what happens after October 1. As you've already seen, most of the mayor's emergency shelter plan fits in this category, and I won't go over that again. Next slide, please. In addition to the Tier 1 menu and recommendations, the task force also released a Tier 2 menu, which are all options which could be turned on within 90 days. These include the Arctic Recreation Center, Alex Hotel, former Alaska Native Charter School, former GCI Call Center, Salvation Army Gym, former DMV on Benson, and other hotel master leases and conversions for housing. The task force will continue to explore these options, which is important, as you'll see on later slides. Next slide, please. I want to spend a minute talking about uh, just some of the possible long-term solutions that are already in place or are currently recently approved or are unknown. Next slide, please. Through the facilitated process, two facilities have come online that will greatly benefit the community, the complex care facility in the former Sakai Inn and a permanent supportive housing and workforce housing facility in the Guest House Inn. In addition, the assembly approved funding in August uh, of a variety of housing and support projects, including additional hotel conversions and other housing opportunities through the Rasmussen Foundation, Covey Lofts and Covey Academy through Covenant House. Next slide, please. A permanent supportive housing project through Providence, Alaska. A continuation of the Landlord Housing Partnership through United Way. Development of the Community Resource Center through Shiloh Community Development. And the Rehoming Veterans Project through the Elk Eagle River Elks Lodge, number 2682. Next slide, please. Two of the unknowns, of course, are the fate of the Navigation Center, which will be back before the Assembly on October 25, and the outcomes of the Assembly retreat held on September 9th, where we focused most of our time on an in-depth discussion on housing. Next slide, please. Today, the Assembly will be considering the plan the Housing and Homelessness Committee came up with on September 21. Part of the plan increases capacity at current facilities to include increased capacity at Brother Francis Shelter of 20 individuals, increased capacity at Covenant House of 25 individuals, semi-congregate sheltering at Beans Cafe's new Midtown location of 40 individuals. Next slide, please. In addition, the plan includes using two MOE-owned facilities to finish meeting the goal of sheltering 350 unsheltered individuals. That includes using the former Golden Lion as housing of 120 individuals and congregate sheltering at the Sullivan Arena of 150 individuals. 
Today, the body will be voting on a resolution that will require the Sullivan Arena to be the first facility to be demobilized once enough tier two or administration options come online. Next slide, please. I want to acknowledge a lot of the concerns we have heard in person, in our email, and on the phone from individuals staying near the Sullivan Arena and former Golden Lion. If the mayor signals approval of the plan today, I hope his administration will work with me on appropriations that deal with additional security, graffiti, and supports at the Sullivan Arena and former Golden Lion. I hope to get these before the body as soon as possible for approval. In addition, I will be bringing another appropriation to round out this package that deals with the eight million currently sitting in the bank of emergency rental assistance, ERA2 funds. A part of these funds will be going to the clients staying in housing units at the former Golden Lion. More on these two soon, I hope. Next slide, please. So before we start hearing from members of the public today, I wanted to get a sense of the room. We were able to achieve this last week at the committee meeting and yesterday at the special committee meeting. So I want to repeat that today just to be consistent. So I will invite members, and actually it would be helpful if we get the lights back on for this part. Thanks. I will invite members of the public to raise your hands and if you'd like, and if this is okay with the chair, since I'm not chairing this one, uh, verbalize your support of each statement after I've read it. So next slide, please. Okay, so to start, you support all parts of the plan. Okay, thank you. You support some parts of the plan. Okay, thank you. You don't support use of the Sullivan Arena. Thank you. You don't support use of the former Golden Lion. Thank you. Thanks everyone for helping us to get a quick sense of the room. Next slide, please. Again, thanks to everyone for coming on September 21st, yesterday or today to participate in this process. A big thanks to the administration and members of the task force for coming up with re ideas regardless of how controversial they may be. As I've said before, I appreciate anyone willing to put themselves out there on this topic. With that, we can take the presentation down and I turn it back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. And I just want to remind everyone, too, when you're speaking, to be sure to speak directly into the microphone. It appears it's a bit hard to hear on the live stream. Mr. Rivera? Did you want next in the queue to go through the documents or to proceed? <laughs> sure. Um, so we have four or five documents before us today. Uh, so one document um, uh, is basically the policy resolution, which we will be opening up for public hearing today and uh, having a public hearing on this uh, resolution. It basically lays out the plan, as I've stated, um, so Brother Francis, Beans Cafe in Midtown, Covenant House, Golden Lion, Sullivan Arena, it also um, directs the funding sources and it also speaks to the Sullivan Arena being the first facility to be deactivated. The other uh, AMs, Assembly Memorandum, uh, are the sole source contracts to the various entities so Beans Cafe, Covenant House, Henning Inc., which will be running the former Golden Lion, Henning Inc., Henning Inc. will also be running the Sullivan Arena. And then there is a um, AIM that was submitted by the chair linking to Madam the chair, YouTube. point of order. Go ahead, Ms. Allard. Uh, what rule do you believe has been broken? It's not so much a rule, but I've been getting complaints that it's coming in gargled for the people who are listening over the phone. Okay. Just the, the audio. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Allard. Um, if, if you just hold one moment, let me confer here. So IT is checking, and I believe the sound has been turned up, and assembly members will need to speak 
very clearly into the microphone. Thank you, Ms. Allard. Mr. Rivera? Thanks. So I was just speaking to the final item, which is an AIM actually from yourself, Madam Chair, uh, basically providing a link to the audio of the recording of the special committee meeting that was held yesterday at 2 p.m. in these chambers. Um, so I guess just to recap, uh, as I understand it, the first thing we're going to do is have a public hearing on the resolution, and then the other four documents um, are simply um, do not require a public hearing, and they're items that we can approve after we deal with the first resolution. Yeah, so a question was asked, is this a public hearing? And the answer to that is yes, this is a public hearing. Um, as I understand it, the chair will be opening the public hearing, we will have it, and then we'll be closing the public hearing. Um, and we can do that because uh, this is a assembly resolution, and so per code, the assembly does have the ability to have a resolution before us, take a public hearing, and take action on the same day. Thank you, Mr. Rivera, and yes, um, that is my understanding as well. A public hearing is not required for this resolution, but in order to take public comment and tie it directly to it, we will proceed with opening a public hearing um, f for this Chair, resolution. Just, just want to make it super clear on the record. A public hearing actually is required for this item. Mr. Rivera, would you um, clarify just one more time for like which items, since there are multiple before us? That is accurate. So there's only one item which requires a public hearing and which a public hearing, as I understand it, will be opened for, and that is the unnumbered assembly resolution. The remaining documents, the uh, four assembly memorandum and the AIM will not, are not public hearing items, do not require a public hearing and will not uh, have a public hearing opened on them. Okay, we're going to take a couple minutes to verify process and we'll be back shortly. for the delay. Uh, Mr. Rivera? Thank you, Madam Chair. Apologies, we just need to clarify the process a bit. So um, this, a few things. This is a public hearing item because it exceeds the threshold set in code, so it does require a public hearing. Code section AMC 2.30.060A allows us to have a public hearing on our resolution if the body wills it so we're gonna go through that process now to determine the will of the body. So I move to o open a public hearing on unnumbered AR 2022, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly establishing a plan for emergency cold weather sheltering through December 23rd, excuse me, December 31st, 2022. Second. A motion has been made by Mr. Rivera to open a public hearing for unnumbered AR, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly establishing a plan for emergency cold weather sheltering through December 31, 2022, and seconded by Mr. Constant. Is there any discussion? Seeing no members in the queue, Madam Clerk, are you ready? Members may proceed to vote on the motion to open the public hearing for the unnumbered AR. Mr. Perez-Rodilla? 
Yes. The motion passes 10 to 0. We will now take up the unnumbered AR, a resolution of the Anchorage Municipal Assembly establishing a plan for emergency cold weather sheltering through December 31, 2022, and reappropriating not to exceed $1,217,000 previously appropriated for adult emergency sheltering and appropriating not to exceed $1,216,000 of alcoholic beverages retail sales tax fund fund balance to the Anchorage Health Department to be used for emergency cold weather sheltering. Public testimony on this item is now open. If there are any members of the public who wish to speak, please come forward, state your name for the record, your community council, or the area of the muni in which you live, Please speak to the item that is before the assembly and direct your comments to me or the individuals on the dais. Please refrain from name calling and again, please focus on the um, item before us. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Emily Creeley. I moved to Anchorage in 1996 and I bought my house in East Bernard 20 years ago where I still live. Uh, I live on a block with uh, disabled elders, retirees, large families, singles, conservatives, liberals, everybody. Basically a microcosm of the Anchorage I know and love. Uh, we help each other. We strategize how to get potholes fixed, how to get piped water. We give each other leftovers. Um, and because of this, I consider part of my, uh, myself part of the neighborhood. And again, it's the Anchorage I know and love. Um, and in the spirit, I just beg everyone to work together to address our shared problems in ways that are civil. I've never testified uh, ever, but this is important. Um, first, the emergency occurring in Centennial Park and our failing safety net requires comprehensive solutions. With everything on the table, I fully support the amendment under consideration. We need to house these folks soon. Winter is here, um, especially if you're outside. Um, the only, th the other thing I want to speak to is the people who are houseless are human beings. They are our neighbors. Please put the use of the Golden Lion back into play. It's needed. Everything is needed. To anyone opposing the use of existing structures being converted into shelters, I beg you, see these people as your neighbors. Helping them makes our community stronger, not weaker. I would personally welcome a treatment center or shelter near my house. Right now, there are already plenty of people in my neighborhood who need real options. They are already literally in my backyard, and a shelter or treatment center would only make things better, not worse. A shelter doesn't destroy our neighborhoods, so please work together for the dozens of people out there under tarps, wet, miserable, traumatized, and unsure of what's next. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Assembly and the Administration. Uh, my name is Polly Carr, and I am here to testify in support of the Assembly resolution to provide emergency housing to individuals. Um, I've lived in Anchorage for over 23 years. I currently live in Lower Hillside, and I've also lived in Spinard and downtown Anchorage, and my child attends school in Fairview. In all these areas, I've engaged with houseless individual individuals. Treatment facilities are desperately needed for the homeless, not bigotry or not in my backyard bickering that doesn't regard them as human beings. Our houseless neighbors are a part of our community and how we treat them says a lot about who we are as a community. Are we problem solvers? Are we solution seekers? Do we care about our neighbors? Do we want shelter and safety for families and children, especially those that have been in Centennial Park with no shelter in the elements, no matter their circumstances. I believe we do, and these are the things that have made me proud to live here for the past 20 plus years. So I urge you to support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Thank you. My name's Danny Parrish, and I've been here a bunch of times, and I've sent everybody emails and 
and messages galore. Um, I am fully supportive of housing people. Again, I will say that housing is not stacking. Um, putting them in a, an arena where there's children, many children in the parking lots in my neighborhood and less than 20 feet from my house, um, I wouldn't have a problem with it if there was security, if there was someone cleaning up the garbage and the poop and the pee and the bottles and someone to prevent them from threatening me. I am 64 years old. I'm an old gay guy. My husband of 27 years died um, right at the beginning of COVID. So I was pretty traumatized by what happened. Um, I say that, yeah, I'm all for that. I'm a social worker. I've worked for an organization for 43 years. I know what this is about, but it's not about putting them in a building and stacking them side by side and letting them sleep next to each other. Let's find housing, you know. The Golden Line's a great idea. They have a bathroom, they have little kitchenettes, they have a bedroom, they have a TV that they can sit and watch. They can't do that in the Sullivan. They come out in the street and lay all over the road. They drink, they throw up, they throw garbage in. I'm certain that's why one of my dogs died last year, is somebody threw something over there that put her into a seizure and killed her. Um, you know, I say, if you're gonna do that, then the people that live right there, there's four little old Asian ladies that live one door down from me. There's another little old man that lives next door to me. And two doors down, there's another little old lady. We're all in our 60s and 70s. The Asians got robbed last year. Somebody broke into their house, pushed them down while they were in the house, of course. So provide some kind of support to us so that we don't feel like we're going to be raped and pillaged and we have to clean up the garbage. That's not fair to us. So refund my taxes for the past three or four years. I'm paying taxes and I don't know what for. So um, do something that will better our community, not drag it down. And that's what's going on there. It's just not good. Pardon? It wasn't y'all. So anyway, that's my and I'll continue to come and I'll continue to say this every day that I have an opportunity because hopefully some of you guys will listen to me and feel this. And you're welcome to come and stand in my driveway any day and see what I see. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you very much. Welcome. Hello, my name is Kathy Hensley. I'm here today representing the Hand Commission, which is Housing, Homelessness, and Neighborhood Development. Uh, esteemed uh, let me just pause you for one yes. moment. As a representative of a group, did you want five minutes? Three minutes should be enough. Thank you, okay. Madam Thank Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Mayor and Assembly members, the Hand Commission is tasked with communicating the will of the community on issues regarding homelessness, housing, and neighborhood development. The emergency shelter plan has elements that fit squarely into our wheelhouse and we saw fit to express our opinion on the issues before you. I would note the Commission includes commissioners appointed by the last three mayors, represents a variety of interests including nonprofits, neighborhoods, developers, and faith communities. We agreed unanimously to the following resolution. Whereas the Hand Commission is tasked with advising the mayor and assembly on issues related to housing, homelessness, and neighborhood development, and whereas the mayor and assembly have had the difficult task of finding short and long-term solutions to Anchorage's homeless population, and whereas Centennial Park will be closed to camping September 30, and whereas the assembly and mayor are currently considering short-term options for housing until other options come online, and whereas uh, Anchorage has endured two years with restricted access to public facilities such as recreation centers, convention centers, parks and sports and event arenas, and whereas any public facility converted to homeless services is going to require repairs and maintenance to return the facility to its original use, increasing cost and time out of public use. 
Therefore, be it resolved, the Hand Commission strongly advocates for public facilities to be protected as public facilities. And further, be it resolved that access to public spaces should be prioritized to promote the health and safety of the population of Anchorage. And further, it be resolved, the Hand Commission recommends that any use of public facilities for homeless services should be a last resort and should be highest priority to close and return to public use. This resolution was passed by the Commission on September 23rd of this year. We wish to see the Assembly and the Mayor act in good faith to resolve the conflicts over the contract for the Elmore Navigation Center. We once again wish to express our position that public facilities such as parks, recreation centers, convention centers, and arenas should be kept for public use. And if for emergency shelter, should be the highest priority to, to return back to public use. We appreciate the opportunity to make our recommendations known. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. And I just want to ask um, members of the audience to please refrain from clapping. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Randy Knepp. I had a lot to say, but Danny pretty much said it. I'm his next door neighbor. I am also a proponent of housing people. Absolutely. I do work where I get food to homeless people, food to people in need, and also Would you step safety. closer to the microphone? Sure. Thanks. I work very well with homeless people and people in need and addicts, etc. However, living directly across from the Sullivan Arena, I have to tell you what me as a fairly new Alaskan and someone who invested in a property on East 16th Avenue, how bad my life has become because of this situation. I purchased the house in 2019, excellent timing there. Um, the shelter, let me just say this, in addition to what Danny said, the security at the shelter would inevitably send people that were not conducive to the shelter across the street to our property saying it's now not our problem you know we the people in the area are really taking the brunt of this you have now made my house which i invested with my va loan a unsellable property my taxes continue to go up as if it's a valuable property however i couldn't sell this thing if i wanted to so in addition to what Danny said, I've had people come into my yard, had a rock thrown through the window. When I contact police, they're non-show. Since it was the person that already left, it's fill out a complaint and give it to your insurance company. I could go so many incidents that happened, but the police response and the response of the security at the Sullivan Arena were horrible. I did not know until I got here tonight that Sullivan is gonna, this is again my destiny. I just wanna say it's, bad being a resident there, and I hope you do something to help protect us, the citizens that pay the taxes in the Sullivan Arena neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, sir. If you would uh, come back, Mr. Constant has a question for you. Sure. Thank you. I just, I caught your first name, Randy, but I don't know that I caught your last name. Nep. Okay. I just want to contact you later. Would you send me an email? Yes. Thanks. I don't. I didn't quite hear it. So. Okay. I have sent you one before, but I'll send you another. One. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Welcome. Chair. Point of information. I'm still getting um, messages that the, the audio quality is really poor on the live stream, and I don't think it's a volume issue. I think it's a, a quality issue. Certain words are cutting out, and it's really garbled. Thank you, Mr. Volan. And I understand that um, IT has been working on it. And I was hoping that it has been improved, but did you just hear recently from someone? Okay, so there's still an issue. Thank <laughs> you. 
again, thank you for your patience, everyone. We are assessing a potential technical issue, and I understand that Yukon TV is working, the audio is uh, recording, and the full recording, if uh, folks who are on the YouTube are not able to hear everything, the full recording will be posted with everything clear because that part is working. So we'll go ahead and proceed as we try to improve the sound quality of the YouTube. Welcome. Hello, my name is Susan Brenner. I've been a resident of Anchorage since 75. My question to the assembly, and please look at me when I speak. I don't understand why I cannot be looked at or when anyone's speaking and we have two assembly members that won't even pay attention. How much money is going to be thrown into a bucket for homeless folks without them provided treatment? There needs to be rules for homeless shelters. You're not allowed to have alcohol on you, drugs on you. If you come in drunk, you're not allowed in. If you come in stoned, you're not allowed in. They should be sent directly to some sort of treatment facility. If you break a law while you're in that facility, get them the help they need. We've spent millions and millions of dollars shuffling people to and from places without giving them services. If they don't want assistance, then don't spend more money on it. You're just feeding what they don't want to be participating in life. They don't want to be a citizen. They don't want to contribute. So don't contribute to them. Everyone's just got $3,000. What are they doing with $3,000 to help themselves? Me, I pay bills because I'm a responsible citizen. I understand there are some folks that do have issues, mental health, drug addictions, things like that. You have a mayor who has a plan to help these people with a navigation center. But you guys are so pissed off at him, you're not even willing to work. Well, he doesn't want to work with me, so we're not going to work with him. That's childish. You're wasting our money. You're wasting our time with this. My town has gone downhill since 1975. It has gone downhill. You guys have been sitting up here for years. What have you done? You've gotten your buddies rich. You've lined your pockets. Now you've got somebody else coming in to do the, nap, to do the Sullivan Arena, Hannings, Inc. Did, did any of these go out to bid for people who are saying, I am willing to sit here and manage this. I will provide security. The last time we were at Sully, there was people questioning how they were providing services and doing this other job at the same time, getting paid for both. The Golden Lion, you guys forced that down to us. You paid more money than that building was worth. Well, never, it's never gonna be a homeless shelter. What is it now? Because you guys whim it to be, you have the numbers, you're gonna make it a homeless shelter. Think about the people who are around it. Think about what you're doing that's not working and get a better plan. Work with the elected official that the people elected. Thank you for your testimony. Again, folks, please refrain from clapping. Welcome. Hello, um, my name is Sarah Stoops and I live in West Anchorage and I'm speaking um, on behalf of the resolution. I'm, I'm for the resolution. Um, I'd like to also encourage um, a good chunk of the money to go to support services, like has been spoken before, but I'm also thinking of all the, um, our houseless neighbors who are going to be in real trauma having, if they go to the Sullivan, to be moved there again uh, or wherever they're moving to. And I think it would be really wonderful if we could have support staff, counselors, uh, people not miss necessarily just on that one day, but keep going back and see how they're doing and, and um, just coach them through the whole process. So um, if we could just help them, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Irene Creed now. I wanted to make several statements. Um, a testifier earlier said if 
I'm against the use of a building, then I don't view the homeless as human. I don't know where you get that. Just because I don't support using a certain building doesn't mean homeless are not human to me. Um, one of the reasons why I'm not supporting the use of the, um, the Golden Lion is because, like I testified yesterday, 202266 is an ordinance done in August, and I want to correct something. I tried to have my uh, facts straight. I said yesterday it was brought forward by Austin Quinn Davidson when she was named mayor. That's incorrect. It was... Um, brought in, in I mean, and voted on in August, and at that time, Mr. Berkowitz was still mayor. Um, but the part why I have trouble with the Golden Lion is because the ordinance very clearly states that under no circumstances, the, the condition for the purchase of the Golden Lion was that under no circumstances will it ever be used as a shelter. And to now call it housing, we're talking about an emergency called weather sheltering plan. So don't tell me, oh, we're not using it as a shelter, we're using it for housing. If you want to use the Golden Lion, make it a treatment center. I, I am totally in agreement, I mean, and agree with the people that say we need treatment centers. Um, the other thing, no, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> anyway. Make it a, tr a, a treatment center, um, and the other thing, now I remember, the other thing that I wanted to say is there are people on the streets who do not want help. They will tell you to your face. So that, like the testifier before me said, um, why are we wasting money on them when they consciously decide not to come into a shelter? I am all for expanding um, the current facilities that you had in your plan and making the capacities bigger. Oh, and the last thing I want to say about the hockey rinks. From what I understand, Dempsey especially, there's a lot of the, the people, the kids get the most scholarships from hockey scholarships. If we use the hockey rinks, they can't play enough games to apply for the scholarships, so we're robbing the kids of a chance to get a scholarship. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. <coughs> Sorry about that. Welcome. Hi, Madam Chair, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Nate Anderson. I live in the Lower Hillside. I appreciate each of you for your service for the City of Anchorage and the municipality. Um, this is a very challenging situation. I would like to speak in favor of the amendment. I do support uh, helping find housing to help these individuals have a warm roof over their head in the winter time. However, I do want to reiterate that a roof does not solve homelessness. We have to come up with a comprehensive plan that deals with the underlying issues causing homelessness. And I appreciate all of your efforts in those things. And with that, I believe treatment is needed. I believe we need to find ways to decentralize so that we're not encouraging a drug and alcohol culture. I do think that as you go around Anchorage, you see the issues. I am an avid hockey player and supporter of hockey. Um, I, I understand there may be a need to use the Sullivan Arena this year. I wish there wasn't. I strongly oppose the use of either Dempsey Anderson or Ben Bokey Ice Arena. Uh, those facilities would be catastrophic to the uh, hockey community and, and what kids that are aspiring and trying to meet goals and trying to be the future leaders and citizens of, of the municipality. Um, with that said, I, I charge you to please find a way in the spirit of cooperation to come up with a more permanent plan. Uh, winter coming to Alaska is not a new phenomenon. It will happen this year and it will happen next year. And so if we can please find a comprehensive plan and agree on it and fund it, um, I encourage you to do so. I thank you for your service and thank you for the time. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Thank you. My name is <coughs> Charles Tyrell. I'm in scenic Foothills area. Um, I had two things to bring forward. One is 
Um, hopefully there's going to be a bridging of services at this, uh, at the Sullivan, um, and it sounds like until something longer term is in place, that's what needs to be done. I am, by the way, in support of the plan, but hopefully be able to get some of those services as a bridge until after the first of the, the year. Um, secondly, I'm wondering what's gonna happen as far as outreach to the uh, different communities of the homeless folks that are out there. Um, I am a nurse at Regional, I do wound care, I end up interacting a lot with the homeless community and they're widely scattered and I'm wondering how they're gonna know what facilities are there, which ones are appropriate for them, how that's gonna take place. Um, and then finally, as a side note, like I said, I'm a wound care nurse, we have already had our first extremity cold injury this year, last week, uh, that I've seen. I'm sure there are more out there. So that was from the campground. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, actually, sir. Yes. Mr. Constant has a question for you. Thanks. Um, I'm not asking you to speak on behalf of regional. That would be perilous. But yeah. I've heard from a medical professional at ANMC and at the emergency room at Providence that the interactions right now inside the ER have been pretty high, like increasing. Are you experiencing the same personally in your work recently, last month? So my role at the hospital is no longer, I was in the ED for a while okay. as a pool nurse. I do occasionally get consulted to go down to the ED, so I keep my, or emergency room, we call it the ED. Um, I do occasionally go down, so I keep my eye on the census of that to see what's going on, and it's been full. Okay. And that's anecdotal only. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to the people. Yep. I'm sure that they will yep, thank you. be able to feel that. Thank you for your testimony. So I have been advised that we need to restart the YouTube feed as this may address the issues that folks are reporting. Um, it will take about five minutes. So I apologize. We're going to go ahead and pause here for five minutes and restart the YouTube feed in the hopes that that will correct the issue. and resume our public testimony. Um, I want to let folks know that the YouTube has been restarted. However, we think there might be a persistent network issue. And so the problems folks were reporting may not be resolved. However, the TV broadcast is working and the recording is working as well. So we will continue on with public testimony. Welcome. Hi, my name is Jessica Parks. I live in East Anchorage. I wanted to speak tonight in support of this resolution and specifically in support of the use of the Golden Lion for permanent supportive housing. Looking at the outcomes of permanent supportive housing, over 80% of people who enter permanent supportive housing have maintained and retained that housing a year later. Almost exclusively, people who enter into these facilities have a verified disability. Over 75% of people who enter into permanent supportive housing by the end of their tenure there have increased their cash and non-cash benefits and supports. This also has the result of decreased use of emergency resources, uh, which save the municipality money. If you, t if you approach someone and offer them shelter, you could have someone who says no, either because they are not interested in shelter, they have uh, residual trauma or uh, traumatization affiliated with a specific shelter, but if you came to them and offered them housing, they are a lot more likely to accept. When you have someone who enters into housing and they are able to stabilize, you're able to see uh, better outcomes. You're able to see that person be able to address some of their ongoing issues that are very difficult to address in shelter. I think that there has been a lot of conversation about the Golden Line being used as emergency shelter and the proposal is for it to be used as permanent housing. When somebody is in permanent housing, they have protections under the landlord tenant law. They have 
signed leases. They are building up a rental history to allow them to be able to continue building that and eventually transition into uh, non-supportive housing or maintain that uh, rental history uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Hi, my name is Katie Neer. I vote under Mary Neer, because that's my legal name. First of all, I want to say this is not an emergency. We knew two and a half years ago when the Sullivan was used because there was an emergency that we were going to have to fix it. Not only the Sullivan, but the problems associated with moving all the people into the congregate setting of the Sullivan. So calling it an emergency, I guess I'm just trying to say I'm very disappointed in the mayor, the administration, the assembly, and everyone else who has the authority to do something about it. That being said, I'm here because I play hockey. That's right, I'm a lifelong Alaskan, born in the territory of Alaska, so I am an old Alaskan. I grew up in Anchorage, I lived on the east side, I've lived on hillside in two different areas, I've lived in West Anchorage, and 12 years ago I moved to downtown, and I live on E Street, which is also known as Homeless Highway. And I can tell you stories, not as good as the other gentleman told you, but it's been interesting, especially in the last four or five years, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. I don't know what the answer is. I don't think anyone does. I think we need to do something because October 1st is what, three or four days away. I do not want you to take our rinks away. If we have to shelter them, let's use the Sullivan. It's been used before. There's a system to using it that was established. You know what worked then. You know what doesn't work. You can improve on that. But let's move forward and get this solved so that when the new center out on Tudor is ready, that maybe we can do something positive for everyone, not only the people that live around the Sullivan, but for the homeless also. And I want to say, as a hockey player, I play at both Dempsey and Ben Bulky Arenas. I play usually twice a week. I also play at UAA when we have ice there. And I'll tell you, I started playing again after the pandemic in January of this year, and it was a little scary. I agree with the gentleman, you need more security down there. Um, it was a little scary walking out at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night after a game um, to, to go to the car. So definitely you need to improve the security when you reopen the Sullivan. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Good evening, I'm Nancy Burke and I am with the United Way of Anchorage and want to express our thanks and support for everyone who's working on this issue and who's looking out for all of the, the neighbors and constituents in Anchorage. But I wanted to speak to you as Nancy Burke, constituent of Suzanne LaFrance and Mr. Salt, and uh, about the longevity of this conversation and the, the need for housing. Um, housing truly is the answer to this question. Every year, in spite of um, some of the comments that have come up, I've been monitoring this for the last, the last six years. We've had this crunch around emergency shelter, and we've had the overcrowding and the burdens and the challenges of providing that, that service that does not help the community. The housing helps the community. People can pay rent. People contribute to the good of the building. They take care of the neighborhood. People are part of the solution when you have housing in the mix. Congregate shelter provides people with nowhere to go. They have to leave or be doing something during the day. There's many challenges with transportation, and that's when we see people with unstructured time or no place to go during the day cause some of the impacts that are being described here. In addition, in housing, you can bring in services for mental health treatment, for substance use treatment. You can bring all those things to the person in their own home at their kitchen table. And that is the success formula that many other communities have seen. I think that Anchorage has been doing a very good job of pursuing it. We need to now focus and pursue it even further. One thing about the Golden Lion as a site is in the business plan that is uh, available on the municipality's um, drive, 
there was always a plan for supported housing to be a part of that treatment center. When we surveyed the substance use providers across the community, we asked what's the one thing that's missing and they said a place for people to go and to stay after they've finished treatment so that they can be in ensured that there's somewhere to be supported, they can start their life again, they can get jobs, they can do everything they need to do. The, the top floor of that that program was always planned for housing. So I just wanted to put in a plug for housing and thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Hi, Yara Silvers. Um, I emailed most of my comments. I hadn't planned on speaking today. Um, I think you all know that I support this plan. I did have one thing that I wanted to say though. For those that want to use public facilities for the public, I wanna say this. The homeless community is the public. Stop dehumanizing them. Stop dehumanizing people. They are our neighbors, our friends, and our relatives. They could be any one of us, one car accident or one job loss away. They are the public. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Madam Chair, yeah, it, uh, it's you state tough. Your name, no matter sir? what you guys come up with, it, it, you're not going to please everybody. But we got to, we got to do what we got to do. We got to give these people a place to go. And what you guys have come up with so far, I agree 100 percent. Leave it to the mayor; he can't come out in a brush like cattle. He could care less. He won't admit it, but that's the way he is. And it's, it's, it's not right. They are human beings just like we are. They need a place to go. And if we have to use a Sullivan Arena over Percy, you those know, two ice rinks that our kids use on a daily basis, seven days a week, so be it. Use the Sullivan Arena. I agree with the whole plan that you people have come up with. And I hope you can make it work. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Would you state your name, please? Would you state your name, please, sir? Pardon? What's your name, Butch? What's your name? Oh, my name, uh, Bernice Sims. I've been here 35 years. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Rob C. I live in South Anchorage. Um, first and foremost, I'm a person in long-term recovery. What that means to me is I've been, uh, I haven't found a suitable or good reason to use drugs or alcohol since February 30, 2018. For that, I think my uh, strong recovery and uh, my personal relationship with a God of my own understanding. Um, you know, I've, I've I've been a part of this response since the beginning of COVID, first as a peer support specialist. Um, now I work in several different manners, but for the municipality, and um, I work with a lot of people right in front of me over here and on this side. And I can honestly say that this is the first time in the response that I can say that people are working together to come up with the, um, a, a rational solution. It's not the best solution, it's not perfect. But what I can say is that when I first moved here from um, Portland, Oregon in the early 2000s, um, I, wasn't the, I was a shell of a person who I am now. I was about 145 pounds soaking wet. I lived on Government Hill with about seven of my family members in a two bedroom house. And um, if it wasn't for people that could love me before I could love myself, I wouldn't be standing here before you today. Um, when I see the homeless population, I see people, I see workforce, I see people that um, have the human potential to actual, the actual workforce in this field. Um, one thing that hasn't been said is there's been about 13 to 20 people um, that graduated from recovery services from Cook and the Tribal Council that were actively working for either Beans 99 plus one, Henning Inc. Um, and various other um, organizations that uh, live and bleed recovery. And uh, 
man, I'm just saying that, you know, there's a, another coin to this that's not being even talked about, you know, and that's the people that do recover, that have recovered and will continue to recover if we take action now. We have an opportunity. Let's not let it slip away. That's all I got. Thanks. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak? If so, please come forward. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Marcela Peña. I am the daughter of Edmi Angumesindo Peña. I live in South Anchorage. I am the lucky heir of two houses in South Anchorage. I'm also the lucky heir of egg taxi permits as a result of my parents' hard work over the course of 25 years. The last five years were traumatic. I've been able to hear testimony this evening and I'm so grateful to be here. I've heard things like they're human beings, stop dehumanizing people, which is interesting because of how my parents were dehumanized through the actions of the assembly. Title 11 was used to devalue the taxi permits that my parents had. Eight taxi permits had a valuation of over $1 million, and on the day of my parents' death, they were devalued to $44,000. That is an extreme devaluation. It was purposeful, it was premeditated, and it was very much forced down their throats. So when I hear that this is to help stop, to help create emergency services for the homeless. I, I think about how you guys just went out of your way to almost create homelessness in my family through your actions against my parents and other legacy owners. I, too, as the last person who testified, come from Portland. I'm here as a result of my parents' death. I'm here as a result of Title 11. Portland has done an incredible amount of stuff in regards to the homeless. They offer bus passes. They try and reunite the homeless and send them off to their families in other states, and they remain in contact with the homeless. I believe for months, and I believe it's for a year, we can provide airplane tickets to reunite families to try and help people get pushed up. We can employ people to pick up trash. I think one of the solutions is definitely permanent housing, and I think beautiful, to not take away from freaking Trump, but beautiful should really be our target in, in the creation of permanent housing. I think we should offer up a global design contest for our permanent housing, for our homeless. And when I say global, I mean global. I think we should invite ideas from all over the place because obviously you're not getting as far as you really need to be getting and you're using our time and you're using our money, much like you did my parents. I think we should help distinguish between who wants to be helped and who does not want to be helped. And we need to understand that number and who is on one side of that number and who is on the other side of that number. And that global contest should keep that in mind and we should help both sides of those numbers. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak? If so, please come forward. Anyone at all? Seeing and hearing no one, public testimony and this item is now closed. What is the will of the body? Move to approve. Second. A motion to approve the unnumbered AR has been made by Mr. Rivera and seconded by Mr. Constant. Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, before I begin, there is a procedural item that uh, we should take care of, and that deals with the other uh, five documents that we have before us. Um, and laying those items on the table. Um, so I'm going to start with that before I move on. So I, this is going to be a little bit of a long motion. Uh, move to lay on the table source source, uh, unnumbered AM source source contract with Beans Cafe to provide semi congregate sheltering for single adults, Anchorage Health Department. Unnumbered AM sole source contract with Covenant House to provide congregate sheltering for transition aged youth, Anchorage Health Department. Unnumbered AM sole source contract with Henning Inc. to provide non-congregate housing for single adults at the former Golden Ho Lion Hotel, Anchorage Health Department. Unnumbered AM sole source contract with Henning Inc. to provide congregate sheltering for single adults at the Sullivan Arena, Anchorage Health Department. 
an unnumbered AIM linked to public feedback for September 25th, 2022 Special Housing and Homelessness Committee meeting on emergency shelter options. Second. A motion has been made by Mr. Rivera to lay on the table five items. It has been seconded by Mr. Volan. Mr. Rivera? I don't need to speak to it, thanks. Okay. Mr. Constant? Yeah, thank you. Um, just one item, the AIM linking the public feedback. I just want to restate that the purpose of this AIM and that link is to ensure that the comments that were submitted to us yesterday at the, at the committee meeting are incorporated into the record of this public hearing, or excuse me, of this item tonight. So I know that the item, the document does that. Um, what I would prefer we do to this item is add the number of the resolution. Can we authorize the clerk to make that change once we have the number assigned? No, it doesn't need to be a resolution in the AIM though. What I would like to have is the number of AR, whatever a number that we're working on tonight is included in this AIM document so that in the future people will be able to find it and reference it back. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Constant. The clerk has indicated that she will be able to reference the unnumbered resolution that is before us um, and reference it in the AIM regarding the audio recording of public feedback uh, that was taken at yesterday's Special Housing and Homelessness Committee meeting. Seeing no other members in the queue, members may proceed to vote on the motion to lay on the table the four assembly, unnumbered assembly memorandums and the one unnumbered AIM. Mr. Perez Verdia, how do you vote on the late on the table items? Yes. The motion passes 10 to 0. Those items have been laid on the table. We are now back on the main motion to approve the unnumbered AR. Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I apologize. Uh, I'm going to be speaking a lot at the beginning of this, and hopefully I'll be able to shut up after that. Okay, so um, I believe the first thing that we need to do during the deliberation on this plan is to hear from the mayor. So aside from any general comments the mayor may have, I have the following specific question and to address. Mr. Mayor, will you support, not veto, and work with your staff to quickly implement this emergency shelter plan. Uh, Mr. Rivera, through the chair, thank you for the question. First, I want to start by just saying uh, thank you to the assembly and the uh, task force for all the work they've done. I know it's a lot of work. We've been, we ourselves have been doing it a long time, so thank you very much for uh, yesterday's meeting and today's meeting. Uh, to your uh, specific question, uh, there's a lot to go through here. This is a complex plan. We have a lot of work to do in analysis with legal. So to your specific question, I simply can't answer it in good faith tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we're, we're uh, to, uh, 
to Ms. Allard, yes, we are on the AR. Um, apologies, I'm just trying to recenter myself for a second before I continue speaking. Okay. So, um, I want to start uh, my ever-growing comments with giving thanks, talk about two components not before us today, speak to the selection of the provider for two of the facilities, which I know some folks spoke to in the public hearing, go into two criticisms, reiterate the long-term work that is ongoing, move on to my hope for the future, and end with a request from the Emergency Shelter Task Force to provide any comments they may have. <laughs> That's great, two of you did it at the same time. Um, okay, uh, so first, thank you to the administration, thank you to the public for being part of this complicated and evolving process, and a huge thank you to the task force for all your hard work to get us to solutions today. As I stated during my presentation, there will be two items coming forward soon from me that I hope to have the administration's support with. One dealing with providing supports around the Sullivan Arena and former Golden Lion, and a second dealing with allocating emergency rental assistance to ERA2 funds, in part to provide residents staying at the housing units in the former Golden Lion with 12 months of rental assistance that are tied to the individual and not the location. Moving on, I wanna speak briefly to the selection of the provider to run the Golden Lion and Sullivan Arena. This was something of an interesting process, and I want this to be transparent to the public and the body. So as the individual tasked with putting the documents together to effectuate the plan that came out of the Committee on Housing and Homelessness on September 21, I also had the wonderful job of finding the provider to run the Golden Lion and Sullivan Arena as housing and congregate shelter respectively. After some initial consultations, I had documents drafted with one particular provider. The administration reached out to me in the spirit of collaboration and wanted to meet with me regarding this decision. I agreed to this meeting and the conclusion of this collaborative discussion leading to, led to putting a pause on choosing a particular provider and instead seeking a quick turnaround of bids from a variety of providers with a few criteria that needed to be met for consideration. The two most important being, one, ability to turn on by October 1, and two, ability to staff up the effort quickly. That is why initial documents that came out had the term, quote unquote, vendor, in place of a particular provider. Over the weekend, we received two bids which complied with the criteria. Just earlier today, at 3.45 p.m., after a final consultation with the Anchorage Health Department, I chose a particular provider, Henning Inc., which is now reflected in the documents. This selection falls in line with the Anchorage Health Department's recommendation. I want to thank all of the providers for being willing to consider running this effort on such short notice. I look forward to Henning Inc. effectively running these two operations, housing at the former Golden Lion and congregate sheltering at the Sullivan Arena. Now for the two criticisms. First, there was no need to close the Sullivan Arena as a COVID-19 mass care site. We wouldn't be here today if it had stayed open. I asked and implored that it stay open during the facilitated process, and even thought for a split second that the mayor had listened to reason and had agreed to keep it open only to learn that a staff had spoken out of turn and that the mayor was sticking to his decision to shut it down. Second criticism, the task force did a tremendous amount of work to help us get to solutions today. For the administration to simply stay silent and not offer any helpful opinion when the task force presented last week was plain disrespectful. I hope the mayor will be able to speak directly to the task force today, as I believe several of them are here or listening. Okay, next I wanna reiterate some of the long-term plan. I presented it in the, my presentation earlier, but I just wanna reiterate it, just so folks have it in their head. 
So through the facilitated process, two facilities have come online that will greatly benefit the community. Complex care facility in the former Sakai Inn and a permanent supportive housing and workforce housing facility in the Guest House Inn. In addition, the assembly approved funding in August, so not that long ago, it's gonna take some time for this stuff to come online. In August, we approved funding for a variety of housing and support projects, including additional hotel conversions, one of which might be coming online by the end of the year, other housing opportunities through Rasmussen, Covey Lofts and Covey Academy through Covenant House, which that's uh, part of that's basically like a, a little navigation center, which I think is gonna be great uh, for our youth and transition age youth. A permanent supportive housing project through Providence, Alaska, a continuation of the landlord housing partnership through United Way, which has had tremendous success for a very little dollar amount. Development of the Community Resource Center through Shiloh Community Development, which is also going to act a little bit like another navigation center. And the Rehoming Veterans Project, the Eagle River Elks Lodge, number 2682. On top of all of that, great stuff that's going to be happening in our community. With, there's two unknowns. The fate of the navigation center, which is going to be back before us on October 25th and the outcomes of the assembly retreat held on September 9th where we focused so much of our time uh, having an in-depth discussion on housing. And I know that we as a body are gonna act on those discussions. Okay, finally, I hope that, um, to my hopes, I hope that we get past the constant and seemingly permanent emergency state we are in with regard to homelessness. All this does is puts us all on our heels into our camps and makes us feel like we are being backed into a corner. You must do this or people will die. We've heard this line way too many times. If we can focus on the larger picture, on housing and supports, on mental health, on substance misuse treatment, we will be able to form a path out of this permanent emergency state. The assembly has been and continues to be willing to do this work. My hope is that the public, community partners, the assembly, and the administration will work together so we can find true community solutions to these ongoing community problems. We have a lot of work ahead of us, but I know that we can do it. And today's proof, hopefully, that we can work together and find solutions. So thanks again to all who helped us get here. That's enough for me. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to ask the Emergency Shelter Task Force to come up and for a representative to speak. Hello, Taria Ware, Systems Improvement Administrator for Anchorage Coalition to End Homelessness. Wonderful. We wanted to take the opportunity to provide some feedback on the plan that came out of the Committee on Housing and Homelessness since it was released after the Emergency Shelter Task Force put out its recommendations. First, we are thankful for providers finding additional capacity and for the assembly making this a part of the plan. We would like to focus on what can be accomplished in four days as there are approximately 350 persons outside and the temperature is dropping daily. And everyone should have an option for indoor shelter. Second, when we look at the Golden Lion housing and Sullivan shelter scenarios, the hard census caps, we wanted to illustrate a couple of things. Housing census is driven by the number and types of units available. Therefore, if all the units are available at the Golden Lion for double occupancy, then the units need to be available for two individuals per the unit if they would like roommates. Again, this is about housing choice. Unfortunately, right now, we don't have a room configuration. We don't know how many are kings or double beds, so we're not sure um, how we can be flexible. But by allowing that flexibility for any person in the unit that could have a roommate, it's really important. So that hard stop at 120 might mean that if you have one room available and Johnny and Claire want to be together, now we can't because it's at a 120 cap. Hopefully that resonates. It also looks at building that community and we saw that at the guest house where people were allowed to choose their own roommates and we had real success there with people bringing their roommates in. The second thing was that shelter has to have flexibility to meet the needs. So when I'm talking about shelter, I'm talking specifically about the Sullivan Arena at this point because the Golden Lion would be housing. 
not shelter. So when we talk about shelter, the needs for a secondary location, if that location has a hard census cap, if for some reason the golden line is not the way forward, then the 150 cap is not enough for the 350 people unsheltered. So when the task force presented last week, we talked about a need for about 70 to 75 percent in the initial, which would be around the 270 to 243. So as we're looking at sheltering up to 150, if there's inflow beyond the anticipated number, then more capacity could be needed in that space. So we should have a range is what the task force presented for flexibility. Additionally, and or I'll just say again, that if there is no golden lion, then when that wonderful grid came up, that means that that census, that delta, has to be absorbed somewhere else through another option. Third, our community members are neighbors, and they're all someone's, you know, mother, father, sister, brother. And as we're looking, we're looking at while ACH is happy to provide technical assistance and community input, unfortunately, ensuring that there is sufficient capacity when the cold weather threshold is met is up to the municipality. The emergency shelter plan shall be activated automatically with no further action when the outside temperature drops to 45 degrees Fahrenheit or below. In discharging this duty, we ask that you act with all expediency and ensure that solutions are implementable as soon as possible. It is already cold. The forecast is now in the low 40s at night. Please provide a workable solution that allows individuals the opportunity to get out of the cold and somewhere warm and safe. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rivera, any further questions? I do not at the moment. I am contemplating an amendment to deal with the Golden Lion issue, um, but I'm happy to hear from my colleagues until then. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Ms. Ware. Next in the Madam queue. Madam Chair, I'm sorry, can I ask a question of Ms. Ware? Oh. Or are we? Oh, I, I need to go through the queue okay, yeah, first, cool. but actually, if you would stand by, Ms. Ware, and I'll see if the members in the queue have questions first. Otherwise, I can come back. No, no question, Ms. Allard. Mr. Concert, you're in for something else. And Mr. Dunbar. OK, go ahead, Mr. Volan. Sorry about that. Um, if you want to come back up. Ms. Ware, can you provide us a status update on the grant agreement for outreach as part of the five-prong plan that we um, did funding for in August? Yes, okay. So to my knowledge, we still have not had a signed grant agreement for our robust outreach or at this time, but we are in the process. Um, thank you, has that in any way, hmm. I guess, could, could you, how has that impacted the work of um, ACEH? So at this time, we're not able to really outreach effectively. We're not able to go out there and engage and start moving people amongst the continuum of care and get those numbers and data into HMIS for service delivery and service participation okay. because there is no signed grant agreement. We cannot start. It's not that we don't want to, but we cannot start before the grant agreement is signed. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Volan. Thank you, Ms. Witt. Go I ahead, Mr. Constance. motion to extend the meeting by half an hour. Second. A motion has been made by Mr. Constant to extend until 8.30. It's been seconded by Mr. Rivera, seeking unanimous consent. Is there any opposition? Seeing and hearing none, we are extended until 8.30. Next in the queue is Ms. Allard. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a few comments um, kind of about the history of mental illness. So you had Latterman, Petrus, and Short Act uh, back in the 1967, it passed. This happened out in California. Ronald Reagan was the governor at the time. And slowly, the mental institutions closed down. There was an explosion in the 80s with our homeless population. One of the ways to fix the situation is by expanding API. It's um, the ability to allow individuals with mental health issues that 
uh, oftentimes turn to drugs and alcohol. The reason I'm bringing this up is because we have high barrier units, uh, shelters here in Anchorage. We have 482 beds. The Gospel Rescue Mission has approximately 100 beds. What's available, I believe, is about 40. Covenant House, we have it listed right here, is 25, low barrier. Salvation Army, Clitheroe is 54 for the men, 12 for the women. Brother Francis has 20, Clitheroe is high barrier. Uh, Beans Cafe is 40. Henry House has 160 beds, high barrier. We have 80 approximately available. Uh, just reiterated that with uh, Henry House last week. Hope Center has 54 for women. They also have Hope Suite with this 36 beds. And then the Salvation Army McKinnell has 16 for families. The reason I'm bringing this up is because us as a society can't tell anybody what to do. There are beds available. If you want to follow the rules, you can go into those high barrier beds. There's absolutely no need to use municipal facilities. We don't have to use the Sullivan Arena. It's taking away revenue from our community. And this revenue could also help those who are down on their luck. We also don't need to use the Golden Lion. I stated this a couple weeks ago on record here at the work session. Actually, I think it was assembly. Can't remember. They're all flowing together now. But the bottom line is, um, I mentioned on record that we are pitting one community against another. I have the hockey community, high density in Eagle River, Chugiak, that have absolutely spoken out about using the Dempsey and the Benboki. And the reason I'm bringing that part up is because we need to get the Sullivan Arena back up and running. We need to bring revenue in. We need the, is it the Wolverines? Is that who we are? Yeah. Need to get them out there. Um, as far as using the Golden Lion, Geneva Woods came out in the thousands. Midtown spoke, and, and, and this is, was the turning point of so many thousands of emails, thousands of testifiers coming out, and the turning point of so many people getting involved with what's going on in the assembly. So when you take one community and pit them against the Golden Lion, or the Geneva Woods community, and then you take another community like the hockey and pit them against each other, what happens? You have one crowd saying, oh my gosh, absolutely, use the Golden Lion. That's what's happened. Use the Golden Lion, because they don't want the hockey arenas, rightfully so, to be used. And Geneva Woods is sitting over there going, but wait, you guys promised us that you would never use the Golden Lion. And I want to read this to you on record, please. While in, in this municipality's ownership, um, this is a quote, that, that, is, that is not the case. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this amendment adds two conditions to the authorization for the acquisition of the Golden Lion Hotel, period. Number one, that is never to be used as a homeless and transient shelter, and two, the secured egress be required of operation of facility, period. Um, these are both in response to the neighborhood concerns and initial confusion that the Golden Lion property was purposed as some form of homeless and transient shelter. So this is to clear up that while in, it is in the municipality's ownership, um, that is not the case. That came from Assemblywoman Meg Zolotel, and we're reneging on all that. We cannot use muni buildings to provide for anybody, in my opinion. It's detrimental to the taxpayer, and it actually is detrimental to those who need help. If they truly want help, they will go to these facilities that have rules. If they don't want help, their rock bottom might just be death because that's their choice and it's America and they can decide what they want to decide. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Allard. Mr. Constant. Do what I want or die. Do what I want or die. That's not what she said. That's not what I said. That was the testimony that I just heard. That's not what she said. I said they could Hold do on what a they want. Hold on the floor. Hold on a second, please. Point Members of, of the audience, please refrain from shouting or speaking out. And other members, too. Okay, you need to stop, ma'am. You are be causing a disruption. Please follow the rules. Mr. Constant has the floor. Point of order. What rule do you believe has been broken, Ms. Allard? Uh, Mr. Constant is speaking on something that I am quoting me on something I didn't say. And maybe, Mr. Constant, you heard me speak fast because sometimes I do. I said they should have the opportunity to do what they want to do. They have the choice. It's either do what they want or they die. It's up to them. It's not up to me. 
meaning they have the option whether Thank they want to go into a homeless facility with high barrier Thank or you, they Ms. choose Allard. death. That's up to them. Thank you, Ms. Allard. Mr. Constant will continue his remarks. As I said, thank you. Next, the argument that was previously made was <clears throat> we should send them all to a psychiatric locked up hospital. That's what API is, in fact. The whole purpose of downsizing API in the year 2000 was to provide services for people who don't need to be institutionalized permanently in the community, community-based supports. Last 24 hours in this building, the idea of the death of people who we don't agree with has been much too close to the surface of this conversation by some members. And it's shocking and horrifying to me. A little bit more history. Yes, Reagan started the deinstitutionalization process, which sent scores, millions, probably hundreds of thousands of people into the streets who had previously had some roof over their head. Alaska was a party to it, and in fact, it wasn't a bad thing. When it happened in Alaska, when they shut down the hospital where we sent all of our, quote, retarded people in Cordova, instead we brought them home. In the year 2000, when they cut API in half, the beds, they went from 175, 150 beds to 75 beds with the promise of supports. They got the first part right. They tore down, rebuilt, and created a hospital that served 75 people. But they never invested in the community-based supports. And the difference of those people ended up in the streets of your neighborhood. Again, there was an effort to decriminalize and change our corrections policy just seven years ago. It was a two-pronged approach. Texas did it right, very successful. Create community-based supports, and then take people out of jail who aren't dangerous, but instead serve them in the community. The state reversed the order. They shut down the institutions, and they failed to invest in the community-based supports, pouring scores and hundreds more people into the streets of our community unserved and unserviced. It's not a mistake that we see all of these individuals without a place to live and without basic supports. The state of Alaska has cut over $100 million a year of support from the municipality of Anchorage in the last 10 years. They've cut the supports and shifted the burden onto you and me and everyone else who lives in this municipality. And what's left? People dying on our streets. People sick on our streets and in our neighborhoods, on our doorsteps and on our business stoops. And who's responsible for them? If nobody else is, we are. We have a duty to ensure that people are not dying in our streets. No matter what, people are shaking their head no. We do. But together, we can go to Juno and demand that the state fulfill the promise, that the services be funded, that we have a place for people to go so that they don't live and die in the cold. That's the fundamental problem we've been facing for the last 40 years. I have document after document of plans that talk about the same thing. The fact is there's a crisis, the crisis is we have people in the streets with no place to go. The answer to that in the short term is shelter because shelter is an emergency response. But the long term answer to end this crisis is housing because the only way to move out of the crisis is to get out of the crisis response. And so we have a duty as leaders of this municipality when no one else will step into the breach to fund and find a place for people to be housed so that we can provide treatment, so that we can help them get that hand up, so we can help them help themselves up. That is how we do our part to fulfill the promise. And that's our bottom line tonight. 
and I urge you to vote yes on this. And there are other parts, Mr. Mayor, that we still have to talk about that are still possible and that are probably good ideas, fully vetted. And I look forward to getting to that part of the conversation. Thank you, Mr. Constant. Mr. Dunbar. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, one comment and then a question uh, for Felix and the administration. My, my comment is, I mean, what, what we've heard clearly here tonight and what we've known for years now and is sort of the fundamental tenet of the work we are doing is that housing and shelter are not the same. They are not the same thing. And housing is the solution. Um, and it's why I was so skeptical of the mass shelter being put at Tudor and Elmore, because that money could have been better spent on housing and on treatment, and would be much further to a long-term comprehensive solution now than we were. Um, and so I remain opposed to dumping so much of our resources into shelter when it should go to housing and to those long-term comprehensive solutions. But um, in the short term, I recognize the need for emergency shelter, of course. I think we all do. I hope we all do. Um, my, my question for Felix is, um, Mr. Rivera, rather, uh, is um, I'm curious on the timing of the, the, the measure regarding the the on Sullivan Arena and the Golden Lion. So tomorrow there will be a, um, an appropriation introduced um, by myself and Ms. Quinn Davidson regarding repairs to the Sullivan Arena. Um, and I wonder if there was some way to get those measures to travel simultaneously. If it's not ready in time, so be it, I understand. Um, I will say we got very interesting information from the administration this week, or I should say last week, about the repairs to the Sullivan Arena. We've gotten a lot of um, sort of misinformed emails that say like, you know, the Sullivan Arena has been destroyed. Um, and we got a, a list of the repairs that are needed for the Sullivan Arena, and it's really quite striking. Uh, the, the two largest are um, $600,000 for VIP room roof leaks uh, at the sidewalk, from the sidewalk, and $584,000 for floodlights at the rink because uh, the parts are unavailable or, or, or obsolete. So in other words, th there was a lot of damage to the Sullivan long before it was repurposed. And the, the graffiti and those sort of things on the outside of the, of the rink um, are uh, serious and, and should be fixed, but they are superficial compared to the sort of long-term uh, uh, damage that was done and the damage from the earthquake, frankly, long before it was used as a homelessness facility. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the money that myself and my co-chair have put forward uh, tomorrow uh, I'm hoping that that can go a long way towards repairing the Sullivan Arena. And I don't see Mr. Shear here, uh, Saxton Shear, who has been sort of leading that effort. But I guess one of the questions I would like for him to be prepared for tomorrow at the meeting is which of these kind of repairs can, can, be, can, can, can go forward, even with the mezzanine level being used as an as a emergency shelter? Um, you know, can we repair uh, the floodlights, for example, or can we repair this VIP room that has a leaky roof, again, unrelated to the homelessness? And, and I genuinely don't know. I don't know, um, you know if, if that kind of construction can be done while folks are occupying the mezzanine. I certainly hope that we can do some of those more superficial repairs along the outside, because I do think it has a psychological impact on the people that um, use the facility and the nearby facilities. They see the Sullivan boarded up, and they don't think, oh, look, they are, <laughs> they are protecting this facility from the weather. They think this, the inside of this facility must be destroyed. But the folks that have done the tours through it and the itemized list we've got from the administration indicate that the the, um, there was certainly a lot of cleaning that had to be done, and most of it has been, but the actual repairs are not nearly as significant as, as perhaps some of us feared they might be. Um, so that's my, my urge to the administration. If we go forward with this plan tonight, and the mayor doesn't veto it or doesn't decide to use a different facility, um, let us know what, percent, what amount of money, what of the money that we're going to put forward tomorrow, what you need and can realistically use if, if the Sullivan is re, uh, being used as an emergency shelter for the next several months. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. Mr. Rivera. Thanks. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to Mr. Dunbar, you know, I'm definitely wor willing to work as hard and fast as possible. I want to get this right, which is why you don't see anything today. 
and I want to work with the administration to do that, which is probably why you won't see anything either tomorrow. So, um, yeah, I would suspect you're not going to see something tomorrow because I don't want to just throw a dollar amount out there and just throw things, throw darts. I, I want to make sure that we do this right. Can I ask a follow-up, Madam Chair? Sure, go ahead. L less a question, more a comment. Is, um, I, I appreciate that. And the resolution, I'm sorry, yeah, the resolution I'm talking about is, is set for public hearing at the meeting in October. Um, and I'm not sure if your, yours will require a public hearing and thus will take two meetings. If, if, if so, so be it. At least we'll have it in front of us, hopefully, by early October um, and that meeting. I'm not expecting it by tomorrow, just to sort of put it on your radar that we are having a simultaneous discussion about repairs that I think could dovetail nicely with the, with the discussion about improving security there and making it feel like a safer place and a, and a better maintained place than perhaps it did when it had 400 to 500 people, now that we are talking about a much smaller number. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Rivera, I took you out of the queue. Oh, uh, yeah, I actually did want to speak, but there might be others who haven't spoken, okay. so I'll just put myself back. I'll go to Mr. Solt next. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair, through the chair. So as I've been pointed out by this body that it is about compromise. And although this plan, and again, thanks to everyone that's put forth plans, nothing's perfect, um, no good deed goes unpunished. But it is about compromise, and I'm willing to support this plan to avoid using hockey arenas because I certainly don't want to impact the youth and set them on, uh, impact them further than they've already been impacted in this city. We do have to take care of this problem, and I'm hoping that this body will be committed to providing that support to going to community-based support to step into that breach that on the 25th that will support the navigation center which does have a shelter associated with it and that shelter is for emergency purposes such as this not something you'd want to keep people in year round right but I'm doubtful I think uh, the body will probably prove me wrong and on the 25th that shel that navigation center will not move forward and will be in the same boat in a year. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope this body will commit to support that navigation center. Enough on that. So I just have one question on the Golden Lion with the, for legal, just to make sure that the purpose that we want to use this for, what's your, what's your opinion on that? Ms. Christensen? Through the chair, uh, Assemblymember Salt. Uh, so legal ha is looking into this issue. We've started looking into it based on kind of educated guesses as to where the body was going, but we have not completed that analysis yet. Thank you, I look forward to that. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Salt. Mr. Cross. Thank you, and it's, um, it's heartbreaking. You know, you, there was uh, some of the testimony, you think about that, anybody who's ever known somebody or had a family member, had somebody that dealt with substance abuse or um, a chemical dependency or something like that, uh, had good friends, got in a car accident, and got hooked on painkillers and it changed their life. They were never the same. Uh, and so there's, a, there's definitely some sympathy that takes place in that. Um, I guess uh, before I complete my thought, I do have a question and that is this is emergency. So for clarification, to have it on the record, can we clearly articulate from the administration what would constitute an emergency that we start moving people in? Are we in that emergency now? When does an emergency start? When does it end? Give some parameters, or do we just perpetually live in a state of emergency? I'm kind of, I would like to some definitive answers on what constitutes an emergency. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Um, who would like to address Mr. Cross's question? Mr. Trombley? Yep. Through the chair, Mr. Cross, an emergency is defined in 16, chapter six, or Title 16, 120. I would suggest that you read that. That gives you all the definitions of uh, what constitutes the emergency. So if this passes, are you looking at filling these units right away? I mean, let's say you, the mayor is on board with it. Would, it. would we start filling whatever is available 
in days or hours? Again, you know, in my time of in, in running 10 municipal departments, it's um, never as easy as just say go. There's a yeah. considerable amount of due diligence that has to take place before you put a plan into operation. And as you can tell from legal, there's still analysis that has to be done before we can make that determination. And that kind of goes with my next thought on this, which is that I'll finish with a statement, which is I would really like to see us prioritize. And it'd be nice if an emergency didn't, it's just like an emergency now, we just flood the doors if it were phased. And once we get to this point, we open up these facilities. If it gets to this point, we open these up. And we take and we have the list of which properties are dead last in case we're really DEFCON 5, however you want to describe it. But it seems to me like prioritizing these in a manner of which we fill these first, and these are the most detrimental to the public if they become emergency shelters, and we only use these in a worst case scenario. I would love to see that kind of implemented into the plan rather than just what's an emergency, we'll just take what we want. And, and, and the rest is I completely support everything Randy Salt said. Uh, I really, guys, this navigation center that's coming up on the 25th is critical. We spent so much time, and as you can see, we have high barrier shelters available but we need to navigate people into them and although i and i've always been I've, I've always struggled with this housing first i understand it right housing first but i've been close to people who are on substance and housing was just moving them around and i totally support the and i forgot i lost track of about 14 public stages which was treatment because housing without treatment is just shuffling it's just shuffling and they deserve better than to be shuffled. We need treatment. And my only regret is I don't see a whole lot of that here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Mr. Rivera? Thank you, Madam Chair. So three things. Um, first, I just wanted to um, inform the body and the public about some information, um, which I think might be helpful to when speaking about census at our different shelters. So if we can go ahead and share the link, please. Um, could you scroll down? There's a, I just want to start with, there you go. So that's hard to read, so I'm just going to, oh, thanks. So that says, data last updated, 9-26-2022, p.m. Um, so this is a census of all of our various shelters. I'm just going to read it through. So McKennell House, shelter capacity, 89. Recent census, 89. Open beds, zero. Gospel Rescue Mission Shelter, Shelter capacity, 70. Recent census, 70. Open beds, zero. Downtown Hope Center, shelter capacity, 70. Recent census, 70. Open beds, zero. Covenant House Youth Engagement Center, shelter capacity, 40. Recent census, 39. Open beds, one. Covenant House Mac House, shelter capacity, eight. Recent census, three. Open beds, five. Complex Care Shelter, shelter capacity 83, Reads recent census 83, open beds zero. Clare House, shelter capacity 49, recent census 49, open beds zero. Brother Francis Shelter, shelter capacity 100, recent census 95, open beds five. Aviator, shelter capacity 225, recent census 203, open beds 22. Awake, shelter capacity 67, recent census 67, open beds zero. Just thought it was important to share that information. We can go ahead and turn back the lights and we can take that down. <coughs> yeah, so, so the question was asked when the census was taken. So the data here was last updated 9-26-2022 at 7.54 p.m. So I'm just making an assumption here that that's when this, all of this was recently updated. Um, okay, so second thing is I'm going to make an amendment. Um, so I move uh, to amend line 37, uh, number to be sheltered to add slash number of housing units. And line 41, delete 120 and replace with 85 housing units. If I can get a second. Second. Thanks. So a motion to amend has been made by Mr. Rivera and seconded by Mr. Constant.
And the clerk is, uh, will be getting it up on the screen here. And in the meantime, would you like to speak to the amendment, Mr. Rivera? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. So this goes to one of the things that the task force spoke about earlier, which is making sure we have enough flexibility in the um, Golden Lion housing to make sure if people wanted to be doubled that they have that opportunity to be doubled. We don't want to artificially cap it at 120 when maybe there's someone who ne needs that extra support, right? They really need that other person to be with them and we're going to tell them no. Um, so I think this adds that capacity and still keeps the intent. Thanks. And just to confirm, Mr. Rivera. I can reread it if you'd like. Thanks. Yes, please. So line 37, where it says number to be sheltered, add slash number of housing units, or just to maybe you can do, get rid of the slash, the number of and just slash housing units, make it shorter. And then line 41, delete 120 and replace with 85 housing units. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Is there anyone who wants to speak on the amendment? I see Mr. Voland, you were in the queue for the main motion. Uh, Mr. Cross on the amendment? Yeah, so just for clarification, by eliminating the number and putting 85 housing units, that gives, it's like 85 rooms, but you can put single or double occupancy, okay. For the record, that was me nodding yes. Thank you, Mr. Cross, thank you, Mr. Rivera. Anyone else on the amendment? Seeing no other members in the queue, members may proceed to vote on the amendment to add on line 37 after number to be sheltered slash housing units and on line 41 to strike 120 and replace it with 85 housing units. Mr. Perez Verdia on the amendment. Yes. The amendment passes 10 to zero. We are now back on the main motion as amended. And actually, sorry, I just had one final comment if I may. Go ahead, Mr. Rivera. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so final comment, hopefully final, final. Um, so this goes directly to the administration and to the mayor. Um, I understand that there's going to be a lot of due diligence happening from the administration side. Um, I ask you to please work with me when issues come up in hopes that we can work through those issues. Because getting to what Mr. Cross said earlier, we are at DEF CON 5 right now. There's no waiting. We are at DEF CON 5, and we need to work through these issues together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Mr. Fullen? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a couple comments. First of all, I think it's unfortunate that the legal an analysis has not been done yet. Um, I asked at our regular meeting a, a couple weeks ago about Title 21 definition, versus Title 16 definition of um, you know, shelter, emergency shelter. I just, I just think the legal had time to prepare. Um, and I wish we had something better on the record at this meeting. Um, I, I do, do think that at our previous regular meeting, we, we heard a more instructive answer from Dean Gates. Um, Member Cross and others have pointed out that treatment is part of the solution. I heartily agree. Um, being in the medical field myself and also um, having family members who have struggled with addiction, um, treatment absolutely is part of the solution. The Golden Lion was meant to be used as a treatment center. 
and it has never been used for that purpose. It has been used for the purpose of monoclonal antibody treatment. Just as a final informational comment on uh, the Golden Lion item, we learned at our recent AMATS policy committee meeting um, that the transportation project that um, would potentially take part of the Golden Lion property um, is not on the STIP, hasn't gone through a NEPA process, uh, there is nothing immediately impending, nothing that precludes it being used um, from that standpoint for the time being. And in fact, uh, for that highway project to move forward, that would be multiple years. Um, we, we asked uh, Wolfgang Jung, who's a, the central regional director for Alaska DOT and PF, that on the record. Um, and so that was confirmed for us. And it's my understanding that the letter that he, he sent was re response to an inquiry from the administration. It wasn't spontaneously delivered by DOT. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Volan. Mayor Bronson? Mr. Trombley, on Mayor Bronson's behalf. Yeah, that was um, one of the questions that I was going to ask is, as we do our due diligence and we uh, discover information, it, uh, through the Chair, Ms. Rivera, would, I, would you like us to send it directly just to you, to the entire uh, Homelessness Committee? Um, how do you best see that? I'm, I'm happy to oblige however you want that information. Go ahead, Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I, I believe it should likely be sent to all of the assembly, but more than likely, I'll be the person working directly with you, with you in the administration. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Trombley. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Madam Chair, I'd make a motion to extend 15 more minutes. Second. A motion has been made by Mr. Constant to extend to 8.45 p.m. It's been seconded by Mr. Volan, seeking unanimous consent. Seeing and hearing no opposition, we are extended until 8.45. Seeing no other members in the queue, members may proceed to vote on the unnumbered AR as amended. Apologies uh, to the clerk. That was two motions there back to back and the system is catching up. So just um, to remind members that just as soon as the system comes up, we will be voting on the motion to approve the unnumbered AR as amended. Mr. Perez Verdia. Yes. The motion passes nine to one. Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just going to go through the rest of these one at a time in, in the order that I have them. Uh, Point so of order. Oopa. Go ahead, Mr. Constant. Uh, what rule do you believe has been broken? Uh, um, Point of not, information, yeah, procedural question? Yeah, I'm not question. exactly sure. I, I think that we could vote on these all as a package. So I've cleared it with the clerk, I've cleared it with finance staff, and everyone says we can. And so what I, was, I would ask that the motion just be to take up all of these five attachments. Sure. 
I, I will do that based on advice from the vice chair and from the clerk. So, um, and I guess just clarifying question, if I may, Madam Chair, um, it's just the four, right? Because this, the AIM was attached to the resolution. Is that all? Or do we need to do the, um, re the AIM? If it's attached to the resolution, you're good. Okay, great. So uh, the clerk said if it's attached to the resolution, we're good. So that's what I will say. Um, okay, so the I will just do a long motion, just like I did earlier. So move to approve sole source contract with Beans Cafe. Excuse me. Move to approve unnumbered AM sole source contract with Beans Cafe to provide semi-congregate sheltering for single adults Anchorage Health Department. Move to approve a and. and Unnumbered AM sole source contract with Covenant has to provide congregate sheltering for transition age youth Anchorage Health Department. And unnumbered AM sole source contract with Henning Inc. to provide non congregate housing for single adults at the former Golden Lion Hotel, Anchorage Health Department. And unnumbered AM sole source contract with Henning Inc. to provide congregate sheltering for single adults at the Sullivan Arena, Anchorage Health Department. Second. A motion has been made by Mr. Rivera to approve the four unnumbered AMs. It has been seconded by Mr. Constant. Mr. Rivera on the motion. Thanks, so I've said enough, but I do need to make an amendment though to make sure we conform with uh, the amendment on the resolution. So on the unnumbered AM regarding the Golden Lion papers, this one, uh, we do need to amend line eight um, to say, and I'm just, to provide, delete non-congregate, add 85 housing units, delete housing for up to 120 single adults. So it should read, uh, I'll just read the whole sentence. The Anchorage Health Department will enter into a sole source contract with Henning Inc. to provide 85 housing units at the former Golden Lion Hotel. Is there second. a second? Seconded second. by Mr. Peterson. Go ahead, Mr. Rivera, on the, your amendment. Thanks, it just simply conforms with the amendment we passed on the resolution, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing no members in the queue, members may proceed to vote on the amendment that would, on line eight of the unnumbered AM regarding the Golden Lion, provide to state to provide 85 housing units at the former Golden Lion Hotel. Mr. Perez Verdia. Yes. The amendment passes nine to one. We are now back on the main motion as amended. Is there any discussion? Seeing no members in the queue, members may proceed to vote on the motion to approve the four unnumbered AMs as amended. Mr. Perez Verdia? Yes. The motion as amended passes nine to one. Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to move for immediate reconsideration of 
the four recent uh, just approved AMs Second. and urge a no vote. Second. A motion for immediate reconsideration of the four uh, unnumbered AMs as amended has been made by Mr. Rivera and seconded by Mr. Constant with a no vote urge. Is there any discussion? Seeing no members in the queue, members may proceed to vote on the motion for immediate reconsideration of the four unnumbered AMs as amended. Mr. perez -Berdia. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. No. My vote is no. The motion for immediate reconsideration fails 0 to 10. Mr. Rivera? That, that's it for me. I don't need to keep talking. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. I just thought I'd better check. This brings us to audience participation. Are there any members of the public who wish to participate? If so, please come forward and state your name for the record. Your community council or the community in which you live, you'll have three minutes and please direct your comments to me or other members on the dais. Welcome. Thank you, Irene Quidnell. I also want to reiterate some things like Mr. Rivera did. I want to reiterate that the Navigation Center would have been online last fall if the assembly would not have put roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. I also want to reiterate that um, through the chair, Mr. Rivera said that the Navigation Center will be before you again on October, but I want to reiterate that two weeks ago you killed the funding, which is another roadblock, to that same Navigation Center, delaying its coming online even further. Uh, point number three, you talk about treatment for the people that are, have addictions and have mental illness, and I totally agree with that. What I have a question about is, it's not a fit for everyone, but API is a treatment center. It provides treatment for people with mental illness. So why are you so against that? And lastly, the numbers that you uh, showed us with the beds not available, Mr. Rivera, were those with the additional ones that you're proposing or before those additional beds were added? Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Meg Zalatel, Executive Director of the Anchorage Coalition on Homelessness. First, thank you. Thank you for taking this seriously and taking action. Um, this is somewhat unprecedented in our community not to be in deep winter for getting a cold weather plan in place. Also, thank you for considering housing. Housing is the solution to homelessness. It is going to be the most economical response we can provide. And it is so heartening that we are able in real time to show you the stabilizing effects of housing with the guest house housing conversion. We have done this. We are doing it in real time and it is working. So we need to do it again and again and again. And in doing so, in this moment, we have the opportunity to leverage federal funding like the emergency rental assistance. Finally, I want to say thank you to the task force who put in countless hours to get this work where it was. It'll be reconvening on October 3rd, um, just one day a week now, but as we plan for what happens after December. And then finally, we, may, we remain available for technical assistance as um, the providers work to implement this plan very quickly. Um, we hope to see it stood up um, in conjunction with or even the day before um, this slated closure for the Sullivan Campground. Um, and we are working to partner with a number of agencies and supports for those who may be returning to the Sullivan Arena, knowing that that might be traumatic. So we remain here and available um, at your service. Um, and we just want to thank you for your action tonight. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to participate? If so, please come forward. Okay. 
And if anyone else uh, would like to participate, if you would please line up. Welcome. Hi, thanks. My name's Jesse Kohlberg. Uh, I would ask that my comments not be on any newscast. Um, I was actually a patient of API this summer for 30 days. And ma'am, I just um, want to pause your time just to say that this is recorded and it is a matter of public record. Okay, public record's fine, but I just ask that it not be on Channel 2 News. Um, I was a member, or I was a patient at API for 30 days this last summer. I had a medical event that led to a mental health crisis, and I was involuntarily committed. Before that, I was a licensed clinical social worker. In fact, I still am a licensed clinical social worker. I made $89,000 a year at my last position. I worked with, the men with mental health people. The point being is, you don't know, when you say someone's rock bottom might be dead, you don't know who's in the room. I appreciate those of you who have spoken with empathy and respect. For those of us in the room who maybe have been both in a position of helper and being helped. Prior to this, so I'm lucky, I have family support. I come from a well-off family, but right now I'm unemployed. I'm lucky I have a wife who makes over $100,000 a year and elderly parents who have my back, you know, if she, if she didn't. But if I were not in that position of family support and I had what happened this summer happen and lost my $90,000 a year job, I might be in a tent. Before coming to this meeting, I walked that path. By the way, that was the same path where we had the come together against suicide walk a couple weeks ago. That path up there on the park, I counted about 50 tents in the surrounding shrubbery. If there's two occupants per tent, that's 100 people just, you know, within a quarter mile of this meeting where we're all sitting under a nice warm roof talking about this issue. Thank you for what you're doing. Mayor, I hope you take this issue seriously. Any one of us can have a change in our fates. I almost died this summer. API helped save me. API should be expanded and better funded. It's a great program. But it's a more complicated issue than, than that. And, and your mentally ill person isn't always homeless either. So please speak with respect about API. Please speak with respect about all of us who are human beings. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. Welcome. Please state your name for the record. Marcela Peña. I'm very grateful to have heard that last testimony. 2018 was my year of financial decimation. Were it not for my family, I probably would have been on the streets. I was a competitive swimmer when I was in high school. I went to Junior Olympics twice. I can't imagine what it must be like to be a hockey player, to want to play hockey, to be young, to be of the age, and to have facilities denied you because your community was unable to put their act together to help support your end goal. I'm very grateful that I can say that I went to Junior Olympics at least twice. I believe it may have actually been three times. I'm 50 years old this year, so it was a long time ago at this point. I was a competitive swimmer starting in junior high. I was in martial arts for seven years. It was invaluable for me to have had that as an outlet for my energy. I attended one hockey game at the Sullivan Arena with somebody who was attracted to me in high school. Were it not for that, I never would have seen a hockey game. I'm incredibly grateful to have been a competitive swimmer, to have had the opportunities that I did as an athlete. To have been denied any of that would have been a loss to myself and to all of my teammates. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your participation. Next is Assemblymember Comments. Mr. Soltz? No comments, Madam Chair. 
Thank you, Mr. Sol Mr. Rivera. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just wanted to answer one of the questions that was brought up uh, regarding whether that spreadsheet has what we just approved. And the answer to that is no, because that spreadsheet was last updated like at 7 o'clock today. So it wouldn't have what we just approved. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Mr. Cross? No comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Mr. Constant? Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you for your testimony about your personal experience. Um, API is an incredible asset. And if only the state didn't operate it at 20 beds, instead of the 75 they have capacity for, and so many of them on reserve for people who are incarcerated. And so it's an asset we barely have in this community. And I, I wanna speak a little bit more on why it's our responsibility. It's not just our responsibility because it's moral. That's an important one. But back in the 80s, we were sued. And we lost a lawsuit that went all the way to the Supreme Court of the state of Alaska. We had an indigent, indigent individual who died on the street and his family sued us and said we had a responsibility to ensure that the people on our streets have a place to go and that we actively pick them up off the streets. And so I'm, I'm dredging up that lawsuit so everybody can have an opportunity to look back on the history of our responsibility. But it's not just a moral responsibility, it's a legal responsibility. So I wanna make sure people understand that we're shaking their heads that we don't have to do that. It's not just bleeding hearts. It's the law. Thank you, Mr. Constant. Mr. Dunbar? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I have four comments, but I'll try to keep them all very brief. Uh, like Mr. Constant, I wanted to thank Ms. Kohlberg for her testimony. Um, I, uh, I also agree with Ms. Allard, actually, I think, who first brought up expanding API or trying to increase funding at API. And I hope to. Um, have a position in the near future where I can influence that at the state level because I've seen the way that the state um, disinvestment has impacted the municipality and the people of the municipality. Um, I want to remind folks, um, and, and Ms. Kohlberg again brought this up too, th there are human beings right now that need our help. And if you've gone out to Centennial Park, and I know that most people here have, perhaps everyone on the dais has, and um, there was a time when I was going about out there every few days. Uh, it's been a little bit longer now, but um, I tried to speak with folks and hear their lives, and it's remarkable how quickly some folks go from being stably housed and having a relatively, maybe not a normal life as some of us would think, but being stably housed and having things pretty much together to being in Centennial Campground. Um, and there are hundreds of people out there right now, real people with real stories and real struggles. Uh, and the snow is going to fall soon. And I want to thank Mr. Rivera and the other folks from the task force for the yeoman's work that you have done to try to find a way out of that humanitarian crisis that's happening right now in Centennial Campground. Uh, my last comment, uh, the navigation center. People use this term. There was a navigation center in the Sullivan Arena. Um, navigation center is a euphemism if there's nowhere to navigate to. What was being proposed at Tudor and Elmore was and is just a very large shelter um, unless we have significant treatment and housing options for people to be navigated to. Otherwise, it's just a shelter. I refer to it as the Tudor Elmore shelter, and I think other folks should as well. And the progress that we have seen, whether it was the guest house, now perhaps the Golden Lion, uh, the ARPA funds for housing, all of that has come uh, with either active um, vetoes and opposition from this mayor uh, or sort of dragging them, kicking and screaming. Um, and so, uh, again, I, I would like to see our funds dedicated to housing and treatment and real solutions. And I do not think that the Tudor Elmore shelter is a navigation center if there's nowhere to navigate to. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dunbar. Go ahead, Mr. Constant. I would like to wish all of those who observe uh, Shana Tova a happy new year to the Jewish people in our community. Thank you, Mr. Constant. It is 845 and we automatically adjourn. But Mr. Volan, Mr. Peterson, Anything you wanted to just say to the rest of us, even though it won't be part of the record? I did want to thank um, all the members of the task force for their work and the members of the community and the administration and especially um, Mr. Rivera. So thanks everyone. Thank you for being here. And again, we automatically adjourned at 845.